In this video, I'll take you behind the scenes of how I created a cinematic short film for Sony using their compact cinema line camera, the FX30. I'll break down my entire process from pre-production to editing. I'll share how I crafted the brief, scripted, shot and organized my footage. We'll dive into the voiceovers, color grading music and sound design. And I'll also give you some of my best editing tips to make you a more efficient editor. So let's get into it. My name is Thea and I'm a London-based photographer and video creator. Earlier this year, I created my first short film for Sony and in June they asked me to create another one, this time on their FX30 camera, with the goal to showcase the camera and its features and how I use it as a filmmaker. So. Coming up with idea, with the cinema camera in focus, the theme for the film naturally gravitated towards cinema. Gary took this concept to the next level, suggesting we create an actual ticket. But it wasn't until we were already in Portugal that Gary finalized the concept of the intro, the message in the bottle. I pitched Sony the idea, which included the film's length, title, and the overall vibe. My main goal for this film was to create contrast. Half of the video is about the camera, and the other half was about my filmmaking journey. The film was shot using the Sony FX30, which has an APS sensor and is capable of shooting 4K in 10-bit quality, which allows a lot of flexibility in post-production. It also has the dual ISO at high base of 2500 and super fast and accurate autofocus. For the lenses, I use the 35mm f1.8 G lens, which is incredible for shooting in low light, especially for capturing those blue hour scenes at the end of the film. We also used a bit of help with the LED light since it got dark pretty fast and we also changed the hue to red to create an orange and teal look. three tickets. All of them are now in Portimao in the sea somewhere. If the water came two seconds after, it would be the most perfect shot. Yeah. I used the compact 10 to 20 G lens F4 the least, but it was perfect for getting super wide shots for setting the scene. So for most of the time I've been shooting on the 18-105, but I'll actually switch to 10 to 20 right now to get some wide shots, just to kind of show the location. With this lens, I was also able to mount the camera onto the car using a newer suction cup and small rig clamp mount. This is probably now one of my favorite shots that we will get but it's also the scariest ones. For this we're definitely gonna be using the 10 to 20 mil lens. Uh, still scary but definitely makes me feel better than having this outside mounted on the car. A really important step is to clean your windows. So now we're gonna position the camera and we're gonna press this button. We're all about safety here. I know this suction cup will hold the camera just for extra safety. We decided to use my trusty festival lanyards come in useful. Attach that to the peak design no worries. To ensure everything was in focus and we had the correct exposure, we connected our phone to the creator's mobile app, making control over focus and recording super easy. The 18105G lens F4 was used for 90% of this film. I love how versatile it is, making it so easy to get close-ups, but shooting pretty wide as well. So if I had to pick up just one lens to use, this would be it. And the best thing is, all these lenses are super compact and you can take them anywhere with you. For the audio, I used the ECM B10 microphone and I've also used it for my first Sony film, which you can check out here. The microphone is super customizable, meaning you're able to adjust the loudness, direction, where the sound is coming from, and even filter out the noise. Oh, and it's cable free, so you don't have to worry about the battery. About 70% of the video were shot handheld, and the rest of the shots were actually on a tripod. For most of the film, I used the standard steady shot stabilization. I do like the feel of a bit of a shaky footage. However, I did use Premiere Pro's warp stabilizer for some shots to eliminate unwanted shake. Now, one of my favorite features is active steady shot stabilization. So with this in such a compact camera, there's literally no need for a gimbal, especially for anyone that wants to travel light. Now the autofocus played a massive role in this film and made my shooting experience so much easier. You can literally tap on a subject and let the camera do all the work for you. And for me as a filmmaker, it's really important to have features like this, so I'm able to focus more on the creative part. Now, I really only switched to manual focus when the camera was mounted on the car and for the reveal of the ticket because I wanted to have full control of when the subject came into focus. Okay, so now is the time to get one of the trickiest shots, I'd say. The last shot of the intro is me revealing what it says on the ticket. But the idea I have for this shot is to have the ticket in the sand and then I will pan with the camera reveal what it says on the ticket. I'm using the small rig handle which is really handy and really important thing is to have manual focus. I will then draw a line so I know with a camera where to stop and then when the line is here I will stop and this is where I know that the ticket is in focus. It's a lot about patience. 
Okay, now let's talk about self-mounted tripod shot. I'm pretty sure you saw it on Instagram or other people do it or on the filmmakers page. So I also had to give it a go. I'm gonna put the camera on the tripod and tripod around my waist, protected by my belt. And then I'm gonna walk around Lisbon for the next 15 minutes and it should look pretty cool. Just so everyone knows, this is the shot in the film shot on the Sony A7S III. The reason for this is because I want to showcase that I am using the FX30 in this video. So yeah, just a disclaimer. Okay, I think it was a success. It was really weird because every single person looked at me. Oh, it looks so good. So we just had a quick look and we're really happy with how it looks. But in all honesty, as much as I love how these shots turned out, it was just as uncomfortable as it looks. And to step it up a notch, we also did the slow shutter effect. So all you need to do is drop your shutter to about 1 over 13 or 1 over 10. Basically, the lower you go, the stronger the effect, while making sure the exposure is at around 1.7, which is normally what it should be at if you're shooting in S-Log 2 or S-Log 3, like I did in this film. The light went off in the background, so we'll just go without it. It still looks fine, right? Yeah, it looks good, yeah. Yeah, it's all good. So having covered the pre-production and the filming, let's now dive into my favorite part, the editing process. Over the course of six shooting days, both Gareth and I combined shot almost nine hours of footage. So I guess it's only right for me to tell you how I organized all of this. Using Notion, I first laid out my editing plan, beginning with organizing my footage, which is a crucial step for efficient editing. Everything we shot was sorted by day, labeled by activity and placed in its own folder. After that, I started editing in Premiere Pro, which is my editing software. I made separate sequences for each day and a camera. And during the selection process, I labeled all of my clips. So each number on my keyboard corresponds to a different label or color. For example, one, purple, means steady shots of people. Now, a super handy tip is writing these labels on sticky notes so you can quickly look at them without having to flip through the tabs on the computer and get distracted, which I'm sure we all do. Then I split the film into four different timelines. Intro, Lisbon, Algarve and Outro. Once I was happy with the overall flow and selects, I put them all in one timeline and started building my actual edit. I can honestly say that for this film, the editing process was pretty smooth. While I typically don't shoot with an exact plan in mind, for this film I literally built an entire edit in my head as we were shooting, which I guess is pretty cool and it saved a lot of time when editing. Okay. Quick tip, if I have an idea for a specific sequence or transition, but can't immediately find it or create it, I place a descriptive text layer on that part of my sequence. This way, I don't have to rely on memory when going back to that part in the editing process. Scripting the voiceover. For the initial part of the video about the camera, scripting in advance was basically essential because it gave me a clear idea of how I wanted the shots to be filmed. However, scripting about me and my story wasn't as easy. And it actually took me quite a long time. Now, for the voiceover, I actually use the ECM B10 microphone. To minimize any unwanted noise and maintain sound consistency, I literally put my head in the wardrobe and repeated the sentences over and over and over again. As a cinema, as a cinematographer, as a cinema... <laughs> then I created a new sequence, chose the best takes and layered footage over the voiceover. Probably the most asked question I get on Instagram is what software I use for coloring, followed up by how I transfer the footage to DaVinci Resolve. I export my timeline as an XML file and then import it as a timeline in DaVinci. Remember that the effects from Premiere won't carry over, which is why I did the speed ramps directly in DaVinci Resolve. I aimed for a nostalgic feel, so I increased the temperature, made warmer reds and yellows and also added quite a bit of green tint. And because I didn't use any mist filters this time, I added a glow effect with the soft light opacity and I also used one of my favorite effects, halation, for most of the film. And lastly, to really spice up the footage just a bit more, I used Resolve's light tap for cool effects like light leaks and light rays. And to wrap up the video part, I used templates, specifically dust effects, film overlays and film bars, which I actually get on motion array. I honestly love the vintage aesthetic and they're also a great way to transition from one scene to the other. Now for music and sound effects, I use Artlist for all my projects. You can easily find the desired sounds you need by searching through their catalog. And for the sound design, I actually used a lot of in-camera sounds I captured because of the clarity of the ECM B10 microphone. But for the scenes that I really needed emphasis, like the bottle opening shot, the camera audio was overpowered by the noise of the scene waves. 
so I had to use a platform where I found those sound effects. Not gonna lie, I found the music for this film pretty quickly. And then with Premiere Pro's remix feature, I remixed the song and adjusted the segments to make sure it matched with the film. Afterwards, I exported the individual tracks and sent them to my incredibly talented friend Jan. And yes, he basically took the film to the next level. And to finalize the film, my amazing friend Pika not only designed the ticket, but she also created all the graphics for this film, including my favorite one, the camera's interface. This was something I really wanted to have in the film and I'm so, so, so happy she actually made it happen. So as promised, here's the reality of how filming the intro looked like and why something that looks so simple was actually so challenging. On our third day, we hit the nearest beach at 6 a.m. and the tide was in. We still tried to shoot it and make it work, but I just knew it wasn't what I envisioned. And because the intro is what the viewer sees first, we had to reshoot it. With just one sunrise left on our last day, and after chatting to some creators on Instagram about this specific beach, there was no option than to just set out there at 4.30 a.m. and hope for the best. It's 5.56 a.m. I believe it's uh, like a 15 minute walk. I'm not. 100% sure, but we will see. After hiking in the dark for 25 minutes, Ooh. Ooh. we realized we took the wrong path with no going back. We just came down this. Oh, can we find the other way back? <laughs> and just as we thought our struggles were over, this happened. Okay, everyone, I messed up after 25 minutes. Hike! I forgot the cork and that won't make any sense right now if there's no cork because how would the bottle come? No. Okay. I guess we'll just go without the cork. It won't make that 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 much sense but I mean you just have to go with what you have at this point like no no oh my god you are kid try. Do the honor. We got it, we got it. Karen well, found it! Everyone's saying about keeping the beaches clean, but I was running around thinking, please, someone have left the ball cool. There's like 10 beer bottles, I was like, there it was. Oh my god, okay, let's go. You can just see how relieved I was. But at this point, it started to get brighter and brighter, so we had to start shooting immediately. But yet again, you know what, I'll just let the footage do the talking, um, but keep the eyes on the bottle. Okay, stand a bit more this way. Whoa, 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 whoa. intro was unforgettable and I guess now I'm even more satisfied with it because I know how many takes and tries and driving and um, just how long it took to make it. I want to give a big big shout out to Garrett who played a massive part in the creation of the short film. He helped direct it and shot alongside me using the Sony A7S III for the entire six days. I also want to shout out Jan for making sure the audio sounds crispy and Pika for adding that final touch that tied everything together with the graphics. And lastly, I want to thank Sony for giving me the opportunity to create this piece using the amazing FX30. And speaking of the camera, these are my final thoughts on it. I think it's an awesome piece of kit and for such a compact camera with high-end features and its price, I'd suggest it to anyone who wants to start their cinematography journey or needs the perfect big camera like I do to support seamlessly with their main gear. However, always keep in mind, while your equipment helps you bring your vision to life, it's the story that gives meaning and leaves a lasting impression. Thank you so much for watching this VTS. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown and learned something new. If there's anything I missed, which I probably have, or you'd like to know more, feel free to comment or send me a DM on Instagram. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out the short film, Ticket to Cinematography, and let me know what you think.